This week, Oda brought Luffy's skills and abilities to the next level and aptly titled the chapter as such. It was a shorter chapter, very action-packed, not a lot of big twists or reveals like last week. So this is going to be a much shorter review. I'm not even going to do a certain play-by-play, -play, but more tell you how I feel about how it was handled and so on and so forth and where Luffy's powers looks like it's going to go at this point. My name is Smalls, and this is my review and thoughts on One Piece chapter 1045, titled Next Level. One thing I do want to get into before we get more into Luffy's powers themselves is that Kaido does kind of mention that he sees aspects of both Paramecia and Zone type, you know, properties for Luffy's awakening. But Luffy, he's just jumping around and not paying a crap of a mind. And then Luffy's just going balls to the wall all chapter and we see countless reactions from Yamato, Momonosuke, and then one big very funny like reaction from nami tama law and kid and it's just ridiculous just the, seeing their eyes pop out like a cartoon i know people were saying that it was like toon force last week and then kind of half dismissing it but this really feels like a full-on toon force effect and it's not like he's pulling out hammer space or anything of that nature and he's definitely still mortal he's taking damage throughout this whole fight and i love how oda really sets up the scale of this because it's not like one of those transformations where the moment luffy goes into it like year two he just molly whopped bluno this isn't that and even to the point where it's like Gear 4 is clearly wrecking, for example, Gear 4 wrecked Doflamingo, and then it was still not enough to take him out all at once, but it was still clearly a very one-sided fight until it ran out. This is the most even that a fight during a transformation has been. So, I mean, well, then again, maybe Gear 3 and Luchi, but still, no. This is, you know, Luffy showing that he still has limits, or Oda showing that Luffy still has limits, while also showing that it's not it's not the most OP thing in the world in terms of pure destructive power, because Kaido is not only take he's still taking damage, but he's not taking damage from every single thing Luffy's been doing. In fact, Luffy hasn't been getting that many direct hits on Kaido. Kaido's gotten more direct hits on Luffy. Whether he chomps down and swallows him whole, which uh, the whole escape rocket thing, I. It's just, to, it's tunes. It's not supposed to work by our previous standards anymore at this point. Things like that, then the beautiful panel showing Gum Gum Giant, that was almost entirely pointless because one, the only thing that Luffy actually managed to do to Kaido before his giant form eventually ran out was use him as a jump rope. That didn't even... That, that more or less disorientated Kaido, if anything. Maybe took some wind out of him and maybe that damaged him, but that wasn't a quote-unquote direct blow on him, and nor was he slamming Kaido into anything. So he was just playing around with Kaido midair. In fact, Luffy took more damage because he was a bigger target. Now, when he recovered from the blast breath, that's just plain Roadrunner BS. I don't mean BS in a bad way, I mean BS in a good way, because it's fun, and he's just running on air. Not like Geppo or Moonwalk, but like the literal Roadrunner from Looney Tunes, and I loved it. Because it's just, it's balls to the wall. It's taking Luffy's natural goofy tone, which hasn't been as much in the forefront since pre-time skip, but is finally coming to the surface again. But not just coming to the surface, it's going to a whole new level. The next level, hence the title, and it's just nuts, and I love it. And honestly, like I said, I'm not gonna do a big play-by-play. -play. I mentioned the big reaction scenes from all the others with their eyes popping out, and we could go through a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown, but everyone did that. It's more just, this is how I feel about it. This is how I feel Oda handled it. And I wanna hear how you guys think he handled it. So please let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about this chapter, what you think about how broken, but still surprisingly balanced Luffy's fruit is, because it's both broken and limited at the same time, and not in the same way as like Law's opio, you know, me is. It's like Appa fruit. It's, 
the way that Kaido is taking damage from this isn't mostly from the fruit. I mean, he's been damaged before. He's just... He's just getting tired of it. He can't predict things that Luffy's going to do because Luffy is now the most unpredictable, the most ridiculous combatant in the world, further harping off of what the Gorosei said. So I want to know what you guys think on that. Leave your comments down below. I'll answer. I always do. Until next time, I've been Smalls of Black Knight Anime and Manga, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>